Hi, Bob Hot Rod Roar from Cluffy. I want to show you today our innovative new press fit. We call this the press con fitting. And um, it's a really unique fitting in uh, a bunch of different ways. Number one, we've got a multiple leak path in there. Instead of having just one single spot that leaks, if you get the crimp one, this one's going to spray in multiple spots. The nut is captive, which is nice. It's got a one inch BSP, which fits a lot of our different products. It is compatible with all the different tools on the market. As you know, there's a lot of different press tools available now. It is compatible with all those. And what we want to do now is show you how to put one of these together. So we're going to do a little uh, live demo here, uh, replacing the valve with the Z1 valve with the press con fittings. All right, what I'm going to show you here is um, I'm going to replace the zone valve with one of the Calafi um, zone valve with the press con tail pieces on it. So what this valve is available, it's got those one inch threads on it, union threads, and now we've got these union uh, and press fittings that's going to look something like that. And so the beauty of this here is now we can cut out an existing valve. If you've got a valve in there that's failed or that you want to replace for whatever reason, this has got the length on it that we're going to be able to cut this one out of here get this in, press it in, and put it together here. And let me show you how that works. I'm going to use this uh, Milwaukee hacksaw tool because I can get cut real nice and close to that. I need to cut about a quarter inch past either end of this valve here to get that other one to fit in there just perfectly. So let me show you how that works. Uh, fine tooth blade, of course, on here. And just hold it really tight against the pipe when you cut this. Nice thing about that, you can cut real nice and straight because I got a really wide blade on this. I'm going to do the same thing down here, and that's going to drop out of there. For your scrap brass pile. And now, what I want to do is I want to prep these ends so I don't rip the o ring when I put these little tail pieces on. I've got the tail pieces ready in place here. And what I like to do with this is there's a couple tools that you get. This here is a reamer that'll do the inside. Get the burr from the inside of it there. Both ends. It's also got an external reamer that you can go around the outside of that. Get that sharp edge where you cut it off there. Reamed off. The other thing I like to do is take a piece of scratch cloth, like a number 120 scratch cloth, and I like to go around that because when I do that I can feel if there's any little bumps or ridges or solder balls or anything left on that pipe, and then I can just kind of fine tune the edge of that. i got to do this carefully, so gloves probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, see how I got that cleaned off nice and bright? I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now this one is a piece of old copper I used on purpose because you see it had some insulation that had kind of baked down there. I want to make sure I get that all scratched off there so I get a good seal on my O-ring. And then I'm going to put these on. Now when you, you put these on, we want you to put that on and kind of twist it as you push it on there and push it till it bottoms out all the way at the bottom of the fitting. And what I like to do is take a marker and put a black mark on that. Same thing here, kind of rotate as you put it on there and put a mark. Now the reason I do that mark is if you're assembling this and this happens to slide off a little bit and you weren't paying attention, you might miss your crimp and you might not have a good seal on that. So you know that you got to bottom out to that. So next thing I want to do is put the um, fiber gaskets in there and the union nuts and then we're going to put the body of the valve in there. A little tip about using these uh, fiber washers. If you soak them in water first and get them a little moist, they get sticky and then they'll make a good seal when you put them in there. So you might try that on these washers. So we'll put that in there. Now we're going to put the body in here. Let me take this apart just to get it together easier. Now we want to have the arrow going the same way as the valve we cut out, so we've got our flow pattern going the right way. So just take this here, put that fiber gasket in there inside the nut, screw that on. You can see I got the, my dimension just right to get the next fiber wash in there. Put the gasket in there, tighten this up. Now I like to put both ends in and tighten them up so I get my alignment just right, get my valve positioned the way I want it. I found that a 37 millimeter open end wrench, this one's from Martin Tool, snug those up just a little bit. And now I'm going to take the Milwaukee um, cordless press tool, the M12, which is nice about this, same the batteries that I just used on that hacksaw and also on the uh, tubing cutter. So now we're going to put that on there and then I just squeeze that and in about five seconds it'll make that press. Press both ends, 
a tool away, get our actuator. Some guys prefer to wire the actuator before they put it on the mount there, but either way, we're going to put that back onto the um, body here. We're done.